Okay, my decap here. Uh, forgive me for being so relaxed. Uh, I'm uh, doing one of the, um, I think one, I'm going to say a story from this torch book. And uh, torch stands for Tales of Remarkable Courage and Hope. Uh, and this book is by uh, Ovarian Cancer Survivors. Okay. And uh, this story, uh, the title of it is In God's Grace. I am a stage three C ovarian cancer patient. The onset of this incident was so fast and serious that I still find it difficult to believe and accept. This year has been a tremendously eventful year of my life. When my eldest sister was diagnosed with stage 3 colon rectal cancer back in July 2006, I was so sad in hearing the news. I took my two kids to visit her on December 24, 2006, in the hope of helping her out and cheering her up. However, I got sick and had a minor, my, minor surgery in Vancouver while I was visiting her. And my ovarian cancer started popping up from December 27th, 2006 onwards. My tummy began bloating up on and off until I looked like a four month pregnant lady. My kids and I returned to Dallas on January 3rd, 2007. My other sister from Hong Kong was on a business trip and made a two-day stopover to visit us from January the 4th to January 6th. She insisted that I must see a doctor on Monday. I know it's only been 14 days since this event began. Definitely it was strange. I did see my family doctor on January the 7th, 2007 and was immediately referred to a gastro intra, um, yeah, I ain't going to mess up that word, but uh, it's a gastro doctor. The specialist immediately asked me to be admitted to the hospital for further testing. I stayed at the hospital for three days. The bad news came on the second day especially when I started asking all the most difficult questions in my life. My OBGYN told me on January the 10th that she wanted me to have the surgery on January 15th by the uh, gynecology oncology, oncology surgeon. They needed to do a hysterectomy both of my ovaries were double the normal size of a three to four centimeter over and there were images of tumors along the lining of the abdomen or the, the abdomen ab, 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 stomach in short there were too many unknown without opening me up to confirm where the rest of those obvious tumor cells were. Also, my blood test had such a high index for cancer cells, indicating that it was an it was an advanced stage of cancer. My index for the blood test of CA. 125 was 1400 
the normal range should be 0 to 35. Hear this again. The blood test. It's a blood test mm -hmm. called CA 125. That is the test that will let you know if you have uh, ovarian cancer. The normal range, I'm repeating this, the normal range should be between 0 and 35. Hers was 1400. The question I asked my OBGYN on the second day was what is the prognosis for a stage 3 C ovarian cancer patient? She wanted to defer the answer but she was prepared enough to bring in a hospital nurse with her when she broke the news to me. She said that most ovarian cancer patients with a successful surgery may live for four or five more years. Hopefully, the fact that I am younger than the statistical age group prefers I may have a better survival rate. I remember I was shaking my body on my chair and I was sobbing so hard that I couldn't quite breathe while my sobbing was causing me to choke for a few minutes, for a few moments. The nurse was so scared that she asked me if I would call my family before going further. But I moved on with my immense, unbelievable mental pain inside me and asked if I could still be a normal mom to my kids after the hysterectomy surgery. By the time, by that time, I was so devastated that I deeply felt sorry for my two girls, Chantel and Gabrielle. How can they live without their mom? How can I only have four or five more years left to love them and see them? I want more. I really want to see them growing up. They are only five and six years old. Breaking the news to my family and friends was the way to release my intense emotional sorrow at that time. At the same time, I was trying to digest what God's plan mm. for me in all of this. A good friend and care provider for my younger girl encouraged me with this statement. This is just the pretty makeup in disguise. I was encouraged because it is exactly what I wanted to understand. That everything works out together for the glory of God. I did get something good out of such a bad circumstance. It is yet for me to discover and to be reviewed by God in his time. Now I am searching to live beyond just wanting to be here for my girls, to do what is pleasing to God and to glorify Him. Not to mention to be a better wife and to be a help to others in a special way. Whether as an, an ovarian cancer patient, a mom, a wife, a friend, a neighbor, or whatever role I would be at that point. Here comes the fun part. I told a few ladies at my ovarian cancer support group that this event is better than my wedding because three of my six siblings flew in one by one to give me the support 
that I have never experienced in my life. They arrived one after the other since I got from my surgery on January the 19th. They planned it so well that each one arrived with a one or zero day overlap. Plus, all my friends who whom I asked for help really enthusiastic, enthusiastically <laughs> give me meals on wheels without any questions. Some of my neighbors kept my two girls for a few nights during my surgery while my husband, Lynn, was with me at the hospital. Some of them sent them to school or picked them up for me. Not to mention the cards, the love, the flowers, the fruits, the gifts, the encouraging emails, the pastor who called to pledge his help, or a client who felt speechless in hearing my news and wanted to love me, mm -hmm. teachers who gave special attention to my girls during these times, and brand new acquaintances acquaintances of um, of cancer survivors that came to tell me all the secrets about how to take care of myself etc etc I have never felt so much love before the continuous visits from friends whom I haven't seen and friends who just want to help or care are amazing. I feel so blessed. God is really with me during all this. God definitely brings my family and friends closer than ever before. Yes, I am in his grace. To update my situation, I had a port, which is a tube inside into the upper part of my left chest done on February the 12th, 2007. It is still sore and painful. That is done for my next six chemotherapy sessions starting tomorrow. Even though I have still not recovered fully from my hysterectomy, the doctors and I have agreed not to wait any longer because I have the most aggressive cancer in my body. There are three types of cancer cells. I have type three, which is the worst. This bad news gives me the good news that they tend to respond to chemotherapy better than type one or two. Please pray for me that the cancer cells will Respond well to the chemo so that they will all die. On the other hand, I need to have a good white blood count before every chemotherapy session. Please remember to fight with me together in your prayers. And I will pray for you and send you hope. And this is the story of Olivia chain. Uh, I said I was going to do one, but uh, for some reason, I guess when you uh, reading uh, great stories like this, uh, so I think I'm going to do another one and then that will be it. I don't want to uh, spoil my um my regular lives when uh because i do um uh, read these stories uh live in in my chat but it uh, it just got good and uh i don't want to stop reading okay the next story is people matter most and please forgive me sometimes i my when I'm reading, I lose my place, so I'm not reading reading real smooth. Um, 
and the writing is kind of small. So when I when I stop, when um, I have to try to find my place again. Uh, and forgive me for the word pronunciation. Some of them are, uh, gets me. <laughs> okay, people matter most. As it turns out, my maternal grandmother was actually diagnosed with ovarian cancer at the age of 80. Wow. She died at 83. She'd been allergic to the chemotherapy. The family had never said ovarian cancer. Instead, I was told colon or stomach cancer was the cause of her death. That might have been helpful to know. When I was diagnosed in 2005, but let me go back 10 years. I was working in the mortgage underwriting industry in, industry in 1993. There was a co-worker there named Dee Dee. Through a series of circumstances, we were drawn to one another. The love of laughter, our work ethics, our ability to have deep and meaningful conversations sealed our commitment to each other. By 1995, we had begun a committed relationship that endured to this day. We actually had 10 years of life is good, mm. almost 10 years. In 2004, Dee Dee's mother was diagnosed with melanoma. That fall, she had two surgeries. In early March 2005, Dee Dee went out to stay with her mother. Her stay lasted for 45 days. During that time, she took care of her mother as she fought cancer. When she came home, we discussed our annual trip to the beach. I felt like I needed to stay, but encouraged her to go. It was during that time that I decided to take my mother to a Texas Rangers ball game. We were both fans. Tickets to the game would make a great Mother's Day present. I ordered the tickets over the internet for Saturday, May the 7th, 2005. There was a mistake and the salesman called. He informed me he had sent the tickets, but they were one row behind what I ordered. He apologized and I was fine with it. We were so excited to be going to the game. Texas was playing Cleveland. We were in section 18, row 7, seats 9 and 10. There were 48,000 people at the game. We were winning by several runs. We thought we might leave to go to the Mavericks playoff game. We were getting ready to go when Alfonso got up to bat. Let's see if he hits another homer. I said, he already hit two. He swung and hit a line drive foul ball. It was going about 150 miles per hour when I realized it was heading straight for me. I couldn't move. It happened so fast. The next thing I knew, I was gasping for air, holding my stomach in serious pain. Little did I realize this would be the first miracle I would experience. The Rangers' first aid court drove up. I was encouraged to go to the emergency room, but being concerned about my mother, I decided we'll just go home. The next day was Mother's Day, and we were at my sister's house. 
She's a nurse, and she insisted on seeing my stomach. She lifted my shirt. You look like you're nine and a half months pregnant, she said. We headed to the closest hospital in Fort Worth. The doctor ordered a CAT scan to see if the hit caused my spleen to burst or if there was kidney damage. Two scans were done. Mm. The doctor came in saying, well, the good news is your spleen is fine and the kidneys aren't damaged. But you do have cancer. I couldn't believe it. Cancer? He had made an appointment with an oncologist. My sister said, you can't say cancer when you've not done a biopsy. He said, I know cancer when I see it. The next morning we were, uh, the next, sorry, the next morning we went to the oncologist's office. He confirmed what the emergency room doctor said. I was admit, uh, admitted and a biopsy was done. Cancer. I got two other opinions. Dr. John Sorge at UT Medical, UT Southwestern Medical Center came highly recommended. He said it is stage 3C ovarian cancer. You will need extensive surgery and chemotherapy. The surgery was done May the 24th, 2005. He found a large amount of cancer. A complete hysterectomy was done, removing 15 tumors. One alone weighed 10 pounds. My spleen was removed as well as my appendix, a portion of my intestines, and a large amount of fluid. I woke up 25 pounds lighter. On the third day following surgery, I had difficulty breathing. It became life-threatening, and I was moved to, intensive, to intensive care unit. I was there for six days. A decision had to be made to put me on a ventilator or not. I went on it and stayed three days. My second miracle was being able to breathe on my own. It happened on my mother's birthday. I then had eight rounds of chemotherapy, three weeks apart. A clear scan enabled me to become part of a phase three study. I received chemotherapy once a month with blood work weekly for 12 months. It was a maintenance plan to keep the cancer at bay. Recently, I had a bout of what we thought was pancreatitis. I was hospitalized and treated with antibiotics and pain medication. Dee Dee and I had been planning a trip to New York to the dog show. I wanted so badly to be able to go. Another miracle. We went, not only went, but because of bad weather, we weren't able to fly back for five extra days. We, helped, we had a ball. We arrived home and I began to have some symptoms that required hospitalization. My doctor said, Jenny, there is a tumor in your pancreas. It has its own blood supply. I recommend a, it's a, a Vastin and Toxo. Taxil. Taxil. Yes, Taxil. I forgot. Um, Avastin will kill its blood supply. Another miracle 
a woman in my support group had been talking about Avastin. Avastin. Her doctor was using it with her off-label. She was getting good results. I had decided to mention it. I didn't need to. My doctor suggested it. Now our prayer is that it works. My feet, my, I feel it was divine intervention that directed that ball into my stomach that enabled the ovary cancer of that enabled the ovarian cancer to be found and treated. So much of what has happened has felt as though I have been led, guided, and directed. I have to think God's been behind me all the way and in front of me too. Ovarian cancer is called the silent killer. You don't know you have it. Usually until it is advanced. Meaning it's either a stage three or four by the time um, you're diagnosed correctly. Okay. Um, there is no early detection test. None. We must be advocates. We must insist on more research. Part of my purpose now is to help educate women about this disease. I want to spread the word. There needs to be a solution. I am 44. I have much I want to do. I have people I love dearly nieces and nephews, and other family members. I am not ready to say goodbye to. I am deeply, I am deeply gr grateful for this time to speak openly and boldly and often to those I love. I want my family to know how important they have been to me. I want them to know what's important. People People matter. Relationships matter. My support group is hoping that through telling our stories, women who have received this diagnosis will be encouraged. We've been excited to watch this pro project come together. From the challenge to write to the beautiful paintings for the book to the song that was written, this has been uplifting. This past Monday at our group meeting, the man who has written our song, It Is You, came and sang it for us. As he sang the words, I was struck with the blessing of my partner, Dee Dee. The song spoke of a constant presence. That's Diddy. She has not wavered. She has not weakened. I am very thankful to her for her. And this story is Jenny Sorrell. Okay. Um, normally after I do uh, the story or uh, read the stories, um, I'll ask if anybody have any questions. Um, so if you de decide um, that you do have a qu uh, any question um, about the stories or about uh, the test, which is CA-125, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing you could remember, that you must remember is CA-125. That is the blood test that you, uh, is given to find out if you have ovarian cancer. So if you get 
if you don't get anything else out of these stories that I read out of these two books, please get the name of the test, CA-125. Sometimes you, you have to force your doctor to give you the test. If for some reason you feel you have some of the symptoms, which I was, uh, uh, symptoms that my wife had um, was the first one was that she was uh, just one she wasn't feeling well, and then it got uh, to the point that her stomach was um, hurting if if you touched it or uh, pressed it it hurt, and then it begins to uh, she had a bloated. Uh, stomach and she didn't know why and uh, they make, misdiagnosed her as they do most of uh, uh, most of the women that's in these two books uh, that's about 50 women in both of these books um, and they still misdiagnosed di misdiagnosed women when it comes to ovarian cancer. Because uh, as you, uh, I read, you see it's called the silent kill killer because you don't know. And when you do find out you're, you're in the latest, I mean the, the stage three C or you're in stage four. And that's the worst. And you can uh, supposedly live from five years to seven years. So I, I hope um, reading these stories um, from these uh, survivors will help. If it's just one woman, if it's just two women, it still may save lives of uh, women that have been misdiagnosed or they will hopefully can catch the, the cancer at stage two, one, or whatever. So um, I appreciate y'all uh, and patient in um, listening to my stories. Um, I guess uh, m m my wife uh, gave me a little shove. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't. I don't know. I just went and got my books out of the um, where I keep all my books. I seen these and I pulled them out, and I thought I could do what we did before she passed away. And that was to help, um, uh, whether it saves, save a life by giving people these books, giving women these books, um, so they can read and, and know the symptoms. My wife, uh, her stomach was bloated to the point that she looked like she was uh, carrying twins or triplets. Uh, they had to draw six liters of uh, fluid off of her, her stomach. That's how big her stomach was. And uh, also when we would be out and about, um, we was at the uh, farmer's market one morning and um, there was a Hispanic guy past, was walking past us he stopped and he he said, um, Mamacita, you know, uh, he was asking when was she going to have her, her baby? Yeah, I guess how many more months? But uh, it, she wasn't pregnant. She, that was uh, the, the, the fluid that mm -hmm. was uh, in her stomach. 
that she was bloated with. So that's that's how uh, how much um, fluid you could get on your stomach like she had. She had, but uh, I appreciate y'all uh, taking the time to listen, ask questions. Uh, it's important. Im important in saving um, another woman's uh, life. Um, the two stories that I that I have read um, out of this book, as uh, far as I know, those ladies are still living. Um, I read one out of the other book, which was my wife's story, um, and, and she passed away. Uh, I haven't read Becky's story, but um, I did mention her name in the video before. Uh, Becky, I think, was um, a 20-year survivor, but Becky uh, is no longer is no longer here either. Uh, she fought the good fight. She fought a long fight, 20 years. And she got tired. She said uh, she she couldn't do it any longer. She was tired, and she passed away. Her and uh, so far the stories that I read, it's only been um, Becky and and my wife that passed away. Uh, the other two ladies that I read in here, of course, I know. Uh, they're still uh, living. So, I do appreciate uh, y'all and your time. Um, normally, like I said, I read the I read uh, one story, one or two story um, a night, but I, I miss uh, Thursday night, so that's why I'm doing it um, uh, pre-recorded. So, I hope this it, this helps someone. It's informative, and it will, you know, save save a life, a life, some lives, save many lives. I appreciate it, and I will see y'all in the next video.